Hey everyone, this is Pete and welcome to a new project that is something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. This is a Final Fantasy Marathon. My intention for this is to play through all of the mainline Final Fantasy games, the ones with numbers on them and perhaps the sequels as well, things like 10 to 13 to Lightning Returns and that sort of thing, but uh, not getting too much into spin-offs. Uh, well, maybe after we've gone through the, the mainline series, we'll see how long this takes. Um, so yeah, we're beginning where it all began with the first Final Fantasy. So this was first released in 1987 for Famicom in Japan and was subsequently localized for North American audiences in 1990. So that came out on the NES. We didn't actually see a European version of this until the PlayStation remake of this in 2003 in the Final Fantasy Origins collection though. So up until then, uh, European players didn't really know what Final Fantasy was unless you were paying attention to the import scene, uh, even through sort of what many people see as its golden era in the Super NES era. So, this first game was originally conceived by Hironobu Sakaguchi, who was uh, very heavily involved with the whole series for a long time. He's not so much involved with it now because he's doing his own thing with his own company. Um, but yeah, he was very much sort of uh, the brains behind Final Fantasy for the longest time. And his original intention for the first Final Fantasy game was to make a game that was heavily inspired by popular Western role-playing games like the Wizardry series and the Ultima series, which had been very popular on home computers at the time. So things like the Atari computers, the Apple, the MSX, all that sort of thing um, had played host to various versions of Wizardry and or Ultima. And uh, Sakaguchi wanted to experiment with that sort of thing because he found it quite appealing. But he was uh, kind of blocked from doing that by his employer Square at the time, who didn't think that there would be a good audience for that sort of thing in Japan. That was uh, until 1986 when Dragon Quest was released by Inix and was very popular. And so Square suddenly decided that they wanted a piece of the role playing pie. And so Sakaguchi got the opportunity to uh, develop his passion project. So he recruited several people. Uh, to help with the project, many of whom are still involved with either the Final Fantasy series or related projects to this day. So two particularly noteworthy names uh, involved with it at the time were Koichi Ishii, who is today uh, probably best known for creating the Mana or the Seiken Densetsu series, uh, and Akitoshi Kawatsu, uh, who has been involved with the Final Fantasy series and I think the Saga series as well ever since. Uh, but his, his main credit prior to the first Final Fantasy was that he worked on the end sequence for Rad Racer. That's rather nice. So, um, the game's strong Western influences, I mean, they, they partly came from Sakaguchi because he was so interested in uh, recreating the wizardry or the ultimate experience. But a lot of them also came from Kawatsu, who was very interested in tabletop games um, of Western origin, things like Dungeons and Dragons and that kind of thing. Uh, and in fact, if you look at the original Final Fantasy and its various remakes over the years, you'll see some very strong influences that are clearly from Dungeons and Dragons in terms of monster designs, the races you find around the world, even things like the way the magic system works. The way the magic system works in the early Final Fantasy games is quite similar to the, um, the Vancian magic system that is found in early incarnations of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and that was fine at the time, because the, the concept of what we now know as the JRPG didn't really exist at the time. I mean, Dragon Quest had come out and sort of shaken things up and proven to be very popular, but there wasn't a lot of other games doing the same sort of thing at the time. So Final Fantasy had the opportunity to sort of set a few trends or experiment or try its own things out, really. Now, there's a commonly cited legend about the name of the game, uh, and that is that the name Final Fantasy came from both or either or, Square or Sakaguchi's financial situation at the time the game was being developed and leading up to its release. And there's been very sort of uh, he said, she said situations over the years where some people say that yes, this is true, and other people say that no, this isn't true. Um, I think the last time it came up was in 2015 uh, when Sakaguchi claimed that it stemmed from nothing more than a desire for the company to have a game that could be abbreviated as FF because this works quite nicely in both Japanese and uh, Roman lettering, English lettering. Um, and indeed, apparently the game was very nearly called Fighting Fantasy, were it not for the Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone series of game books and tabletop games of the same name. Uh, so trademark issues there. If they didn't exist, we might have had a, a very different gaming landscape today. So Final Fantasy 1 has had loads and loads of remakes and re-releases over the years. So this began with an MSX release in 1989, 
um, which uh, stayed in Japan. There was the Wonderswan Color remake in 2000, which added things like more detailed graphics, battle backgrounds, and that sort of thing. And a lot of the subsequent versions are based, at least in part, on the Wonderswan Color versions. So in PS1, uh, 2002 saw the release of the Final Fantasy Origins collection, which was based on the Wonderswan Color versions for PlayStation 1. Um, that came to Europe in 2003, as I previously said, this, is, this was the first time that the series had come to Europe, or the first time that the first instalment had come to Europe. Prior to that, we'd had um, some of the actual PlayStation exclusive instalments. In 2004, we had the Game Boy Advance port, known as Dawn of Souls, which added some new content. And in 2007, we had the PSP version, which again enhanced the graphics and uh, incorporated a lot of the additions and improvements from Dawn of Souls. Now, there's obviously plenty of debate over which version is the best or the most authentic version of Final Fantasy and uh, in this series I'm not too concerned about sort of picking which one is the best or which one is the most authentic or whatever that. I'm just going to choose whichever one I like the best or whichever one I have the most experience with where um, different examples exist. So in this case we're going to be playing the PSP version because this is the version that I actually finished several times prior to this video series. Um, and for my money it's the best version, it's the most accessible, most enjoyable version of the original Final Fantasy to date. So, enough talk, let's go jump in. Okay, here we are with Final Fantasy for the PSP. As I say, this is probably my favourite version of this game. Um, and I have a confession to make, uh, we're going to be playing this emulated I'm afraid. Uh, normally I would prefer to record from original hardware where, wherever possible um, but it's a bit of a pain in the ass to capture from PSP at good quality anyway and unfortunately the PlayStation Vita versions of these or the downloadable PSP versions I should say they aren't compatible with PlayStation TV which is a bit of a shame uh, Final Fantasy 3 onwards is so those versions will be able to play on the PlayStation TV um, but 1 and 2 will have to play emulated, I'm afraid. Uh, as far as I'm aware, PSP emulation is in a pretty good place right now, so there shouldn't be any real issues. Um, but if there are, that's why. So, we are presently admiring the introductory sequence which was added for Final Fantasy Origins on PlayStation. Uh, so this doesn't really have a huge amount to do with the game. It's just kind of cool, really. Now one quite interesting thing about uh, Final Fantasy 1 compared to some of the other Final Fantasies, the later ones, is that um, this one has a completely player created party, so there's no predefined characters in this one. Um, Final Fantasy 2 had predefined characters and a set narrative and that sort of thing. The original NES version of Final Fantasy 3 returned to a player created party um, in a slightly different way. Uh, but then the subsequent remakes of that had predefined characters instead. Um, and so yeah, this one stands out quite a bit uh, compared to the later Final Fantasies in that, yeah, you can take full ownership over your um, your characters and your party in this one. So, um, the PSP version here, you have the option of playing in English, Japanese, Kana or full-on Japanese with Kanji there. Uh, much as I am improving very much in my uh, hiragana and katakana at the minute, I'm going to stick with English for the minute, uh, just so you all watching can enjoy along with me. And here we go. If you've not seen the original Final Fantasy before, this is how it starts. So you have a party of four people, and you can select their classes. So we begin with the option for warrior, thief, monk, red mage, white mage, or black mage. These are all classic Final Fantasy jobs. Um, it's generally a good idea to have a warrior in the party because they are able to use pretty much any weapon and armor. Uh, so I normally put one in there. Uh, Thief is very fast. Um, they're supposed to be very good at running away as well. So if you need to get away from combat, uh, Thief is the way to go. Um, interestingly, in the original NES version of this, the flea mechanics were very much bugged. Uh, which made the thief next to useless until you could upgrade him to his, his better version later on. Uh, the monk uses hand-to-hand -hand combat, so rather than using weapons, the monk becomes very powerful unarmed after a while. Red mage uh, is kind of a jack-of-all-trades. You have a bit of uh, black magic 
offensive magic, a bit of white magic for healing, and a bit of sword play as well. White mage is your healer class, black mage is your nuker class. And so what I usually roll with for a playthrough of this is I have a warrior, I have either a thief or a monk, a white mage and a black mage. Um, I think the last time I played through I had a thief, so I'm going to go for a monk this time. I'm going to keep white mage and black mages. I know this is a very orthodox and boring party, but, uh, you know, I'm not going for any sort of fancy playthrough with this. I'm not going for an optimal run. I'm not going for a challenge run or anything like that. I just, I just want to play the game. So, here we go. So, we will start by naming our characters. And it is tradition... That I go in the first slot, and for some reason, whenever I play role-playing games growing up, I also like to call myself Pierre rather than Pete. Because Pete never struck me as a particularly fantasy name, but uh, Pierre is fine. Pierre is great, if French. Right, our monk. Let's call our monk something which won't age badly. Um, hmm. I shall... I'll name these characters after my real-life friends who won't be watching these videos because they don't watch any of my videos but you know I'll, I'll point out that I've done this and they can feel bad uh, so our monk will be called Sam our white mage will be called Tom or Tun apparently Tom there we go you know after I say that Pete isn't a very fantasy name I have Tom the white mage uh, and then we have Tim the Enchanter, or Tim the Black Mage at least, anyway. Right, so you can auto name them as well, in which case it will generate some names for you. But where's the fun in that? Where's the fun in that if you can't name them after people you know? Right, that will do. Let's begin. Yes. So this intro sequence here, this is new to... I think the PS1 version. Um, the original NES version would just jump straight into the game uh, with no explanation. You'd just be on the world map and you would have no idea what to do. The winds die. The seas rage. The earth decays. But the people believe in a prophecy, patiently awaiting its fulfillment. When darkness veils the world, four warriors of light shall come. After a long journey, four young travelers did at last appear. And in the hand of each was clutched a crystal. So, yep, yeah, the whole warrior of light and crystal thing has been a thing in Final Fantasy right from the very beginning. Right, this point here, this is where the NES version started. So you didn't get any of that set up, any of that entry. You just got plonked in front of a town and told to get on with it. So, let's just have a look at what situation we are in. So we're level one. Do we have an equipment? Our warrior has a knife. Our monk has a staff. Our white mage has a staff. And our black mage has a knife. Now, as I recall, um, I don't think the NES version actually started you with any equipment whatsoever. So the first thing you wanted to do was to go into Corneria here. Or Cornelia, as it's called in this translation. And get some equipment. This is Cornelia, the city of dreams. Let's take a peek at your reflection in the water. Ugh! You're filthy! Wash up already! Hi there! I'm a dancer! What's that? You want to dance with me? Hee <laughs> Oh, but we can't. We've got things to do, lady. Restore the crystals to grace. It's a well. It looks like you could climb inside, but you can't. Really. 
Oh, please. You must rescue the princess. Sage Lucan said something about finding the crescent moon. Then he just up and left town. Yeah, the, the rescue the princess thing is, is quite an interesting one because it's, it's Final Fantasy as a whole sort of subverts the traditional expectations of uh, your sort of fantasy themed game in that yes you are trying to rescue the princess to begin with uh, but then it's so much more than that after that there's a lot to do after that the king truly believes in Dukan's prophecy that the warriors of light will come to save the princess well as soon as we're finished bumming around town we'll we'll see what we can do King is searching for the prophesied warriors of light. The, those crystals! You must see the king at once! Yeah, again, this is different to the NES version. In the, the NES version, you had to figure out that you needed to go and king, see the king yourself. Uh, whereas this one will just take you straight to him. Welcome, travelers. I am told you carry crystals. Is this true? Why, yes, yes, it is just as Lucan's prophecy foretold when darkness veils the world four warriors of light shall come Your Majesty we cannot be certain that these are the warriors foretold by the prophecy yet they stand before us with the crystals I cannot dismiss this as mere coincidence Crystal bearers, there is a task I would ask of you. Will you not rescue my daughter, Sarah? Garland, a knight once in his majesty's service, has abducted Princess Sarah. I ask for your aid in the name of his majesty, the King of Cornelia. Garland has taken refuge in the Chaos Shrine, which lies to our north. Of course, we did attempt to save the princess ourselves. But Garland is the finest swordsman in the kingdom. We have none who can match him. I have heard that you wish to journey to the continent to our north. The bridge leading north was lost long ago, making passage impossible. If you can rescue Sarah, I will have the bridge rebuilt as a sign of my gratitude. Go now, warriors of light, and do not fail me. No pressure. The dancing girl in town knows many odd bits of information. If you stray from your path, try talking to her. She may know something that can put you back on course. The Warriors of Light have come at last. How long we have waited for this day to come. Garland is no longer the man I once knew. I beg of you, please return my daughter to me quickly. <coughs> oh dear, I'm doing the voices. Give me a sore throat already. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm also going to turn the message speed up a bit. There we go. And, uh, yeah, we'll have a wander around the castle as well. The king is searching for the prophecy warriors of light. Those crystals, could it be? Yes, we know. Very good. Garland was once the greatest knight in the kingdom, but power consumed him and he lost sight of who he really was. Please, please save Lady Sarah. Only because you asked so nicely. My, my sister! My sister! Yeah, so, um, as I think I mentioned in the intro, this is based on the script for the Dawn of Souls version, which was the uh, originally the Game Boy Advance version um, and they added 
like a fair amount to the script. It, it didn't sort of radically revamp it or anything in the same way that Final Fantasy III got revamped subsequently. Um, but it did kind of flesh things out a bit more. It did retranslate some stuff. And, um... Yeah, it just generally sort of flowed a bit better. Where are we going? There are some treasures somewhere in here, if I remember correctly. Our ancestors sealed weapons within this treasure house 400 years ago. They then gave the key to the Elf King to hold until the coming of the Warriors of Light. It's a clue. The treasure house has been bound by the mystic key. Oh, please, we must rescue the princess. This has also been bound by the mystic key. I'm sure there were some actual treasures we could get in here, but maybe I was making that up. Oh well, I guess it's time to begin our adventure. Alright, we have 500 gil. Uh, we have no items, so it would probably be... <coughs> excuse me, probably be a good idea to get a few items. Let's just have a look at what weapons are available. So there's a nunchuck available for the monk for 8 gil. A rapier for the fighter. And a hammer for the white mage. Um, or the warrior, for that matter. Right, I'm going to buy one of them for me. One of them for Tom. Uh, we'll get one of them for Sam as well. Uh, and everyone else is good, I think. So... Uh, the staff is actually better than the knife. But the knife is more accurate than the staff. Um, doesn't affect magical abilities or anything at the minute, so... Let's stick with the knife for now. And let's have a look at the armor. Right. We've got some leather armor. Oh, no. Just two of them is fine, not eleven. Oh, that was stupid. Duh! Alright, one chain mail. One leather armor. Uh, oh, I've done it again. Right, uh, no one else can equip any of those things. So, let's sell off the crap we don't need. So, we get rid of those staves. That leather armor I accidentally bought. Get rid of that knife. And there we go. Right, arm to the teeth. Relatively speaking, anyway. Hello, dancing girl. You don't have anything useful to tell me. That guy was lying. And let's get some potions. So... Okay, a few of these. Two, three, four, five, five. We'll do it to begin with. Now, for those of you who know the original NES version, um, this PSP version is, I think, based on the slightly easier modes that was added in the uh, PS1 version. And so that means it's a bit quicker to level up, it's a bit easier to get money, um, and it's just it just generally sort of flows a bit bit more nicely so it's it's not so much that it's easier as such it just it's just a little bit less time consuming so this is another reason why I like to play this version because although the original Final Fantasy isn't anywhere near as grindy as some people like to make out um, if you can lessen the amount of grinding so much the better Particularly in this sort of early section where you can really get yourself into a difficult situation if you head up to that Chaos Temple too early. But yeah, the battle screen here will look immediately familiar to anyone who has played a Final Fantasy game before. Your army of guys over on the left, on the right rather, and the enemies on the left. 
So this doesn't use the active time battle system, so if I just sit here, nothing's going to happen. What you do is you queue up all your commands, the enemies will do the same in the meantime, um, and then everything unfolds according to speeds and initiative values and things going on behind the scenes and so on. So another way that um, Dungeons & Dragons was used as an inspiration. So, um, Fighter here has no magic whatsoever. Uh, he can defend, he can use items, he can equip things or flee. That's about it. Monk, again, no magic whatsoever. White Mage has no magic at the moment, but does have 10 magic points. So, this is another important point. Um, the original NES version I described in the intro as using a Vancian magic system, which is a level-based magic system where you learn spells of a particular level and then you can cast a certain number of spells of each level per day. And a day in Final Fantasy terms is regarded as um, between two instances of you staying at an inn. Um, for, I think, the easy version of the PlayStation version, certainly Dawn of Souls and this PSP version, they abandoned that in favour of a system a bit closer to what we have in the later Final Fantasies, which is just a, a simple magic point system. Which, you know, if you're a purist, you might not like so much. But again, it just means that you can use your magic a little bit more than you would be able to in the older versions. And so I'm all for it, really. Crazy horse! Ow! Well, that's not good. Oh, when down by Black Mage is 21 experience behind everyone else, so they don't all level up at the same time anymore. So upsetting! Oh, well. So, in the original NES version, I'm going to keep calling back to that, I'm afraid, um, because there's, there are quite a few differences in terms of how this version plays and how the original version plays. In the original NES version, if someone was knocked out, like has happened here, um, what would happen would be you'd have to get back to a town and use the services of the church. And the church would resurrect any of your fallen heroes for a fee and I believe the fee related to their level if I remember correctly or I might be thinking of Dragon Quest I forget um, but in this version they added the item that you can get in later Final Fantasies called the Phoenix Down so if you keep a few of those unstocked you can uh, you can keep going for a lot longer yes 40 gold to resurrect Tim. You had better be worth it, Tim. There we go. And Tim is then back with one hit point. So let's go stay at the inn. And get some hit points back. My precious money! All going down the drain. because my stupid black mage couldn't avoid getting hit for one second. Right, um, the old dudes over here, again, they went in the original. They provide you some helpful tutorials. So, if you've not played a Final Fantasy game before, you can go and talk to them and they will give you some Hints and tips on how to use equipment, how to use magic, and that sort of thing. It's it's all basic RPG stuff. But if you if you've not played an RPG before and this is one of your first ones, which is plausible, um, yeah, that's a good place to start and go and find some information. Right, let's try again. So obviously another thing added. Um, for this version over the NES version was the sort of 
I call it a Mode 7 style map. It's not Mode 7 because it's not on the Super NES, but uh, that kind of thing. So it's using a flat bitmap, but sort of tilting it away from the camera uh, to make it have the illusion of 3D. And that was something you'd see a lot in the Super NES incarnations of Final Fantasy. So uh, Final Fantasy 4 onwards uh, used that effect quite a bit to provide an illusion of depth to the world map, even though it was just a, a flat image. Right, this cave here, this was not in the original at all. There are several new dungeons that were added in the Dawn of Souls remake, and they're here in the PSP version as well. This is the Earth Gift Shrine. Long ago you could enter, but the way has been shut sign the lang began to take I'm not sure what accent they're supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be Scottish. This is the Earth Gift Shrine. Long ago you could enter, but the way has been shut sign the land began to take Oh, near enough. The putrid stench of decaying earth hangs heavy on the air. So I don't think you can go in there until you've done the thing with the earth crystal, maybe? I forget, but we, we can't do anything there right now. But it's worth remembering that that's there, because you can come back later and you can get some cool stuff from it. Right, there is the Chaos Shrine. Now we'll fight our way up to the front door. Level are we? Level 3 and level 2 for Tim. Uh, let's pop in there and see if we're going to get killed horribly. Now, in the original game, you'd want to spend quite a lot of time outside grinding um, up until about level 5 or so, if I remember rightly, before you stepped in here. Because otherwise, uh, particularly the boss fight with Garland, which comes quite early, would absolutely decimate you. So it was a real sort of... Um, It was sort of a moment where the, the game kind of set expectations very clearly. I said, yeah, if you don't prepare accordingly, then I'm going to absolutely devastate you. But again, with this version being based on the slightly easier incarnation from the play PlayStation 2 port, um, it's not quite so scary. Which again, there's an argument to be made that this isn't sort of a particularly pure version of the original. But it makes it more playable, more enjoyable, so... It's kind of a balancing act, really. It's like, do you, do you want a game that is a bit more palatable by modern standards, or do you want a truly authentic experience as to what it was like in 1986? Because, I mean, the original version is still out there and still able to be played pretty easily via various services, so... Um, if you got the NES Classic Edition, for example, the little mini console that Nintendo put out, then the original NES version of Final Fantasy is on there. So if you want to play the old version, you can still do so legally. Um, not sure if it's on the Wii U Virtual Console. I'd be quite surprised if it didn't turn up on the Nintendo Switch Online uh, NES app at some point. Because we've already got some third-party stuff on there from companies like Tecmo and Konami and stuff, so... It'd be surprising if Final Fantasy didn't show up at some point or another. Particularly as Final Fantasy has already shown up on an official Nintendo product. Uh, the aforementioned NES Classic, so... Alright, up to level 4 now? Yes, very good, apart from Tim. The store has been bound by the Mystic Key. So the Mystic Key is, uh, as you probably determined already, an item that you get a bit later, so you can come back to a lot of these places. And... Oh! Paralysis! No, thank you. So that you can come back and uh, get additional treasures from places that you've previously visited.
Alright, what about this one? Also locked by the Mystic Key. Alright, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk back to town and go and rest at the inn. Um, maybe get a couple more items and then come back here and we'll kick Garland's ass and that will be the first episode. Sound good? Sounds good to me. <coughs> also, I need a drink. <laughs> right, where is the way out? Over here. Right, back we go. Or we might even make it to level 5 in the process, so... We shall see. So, these, these early enemies here, goblins, um, this, you, hopefully seeing the Dungeons & Dragons elements right from the very start of this, so... Um, goblins are common sort of fodder enemy in Dungeons and Dragons campaigns, and they're a common fodder, fodder enemy in Final Fantasy as well. Goblins have been seen in various forms uh, throughout the entire Final Fantasy series. Sometimes they're more threatening than others. So, for example, in Final Fantasy XI, they're incredibly threatening. They don't look it, but they are. Uh, they're some of the most dangerous enemies in Final Fantasy XI. Um, and in Final Fantasy XIV, they, you sort of explore their society and background a lot more. So yeah, they, they've been a fixture right from the beginning. In one form or another. But as time has gone on, they've kind of drifted away from that original... Um, from that original Dungeons & Dragons inspired stuff. And... Into more of its own thing. I can't afford a phoenix down. Um, maybe a sleeping bag? That way if I need to restore hit points before I go into the dungeon I can do. Is there anywhere to buy magic here? There must be. Because it would be helpful to actually have some spells for my mages. Alright, so, cure. Yes, you have that. So, the, the one thing that this does keep from the original is the fact that each character can only hold a certain number of spells per level. So, you see here that Tom can only hold three white magic spells. And over on the right, you can see the classes that can equip various spells. So, certain classes can't use spells. So, Red Mage, White Mage, Knight, Red Wizard and White Wizard can all use the Cure spell. But only White Mage and White Wizard can use Deer, uh, which was known as Harm in the original NES version. Um, which is very useful against undead foes. So, uh, protect raises one ally's defense, and blink raises the caster's evasion. I think protect is more useful out of those, so we'll take that one. And we should have enough for three black magic spells as well. What have you got to say? Oh, please, you must rescue the princess. Yes, very good. Right. Fire! And thunder. And... Sleep. Now the sleep spell isn't quite as devastatingly powerful as it is in the original Dungeons and Dragons, but it's still quite useful to, uh, especially if you're facing a large group of enemies, so uh, it's a good idea to have. So, I think we're ready to go and take on Garland, so let's save our game. We go. One thing that the PlayStation version onwards added um, that wasn't in the NES version because it didn't need to be in uh, is a function called Memo Save. And what Memo Save is is it's, it's like a quick save function. Um, and the reason that was added in the case of the PlayStation version in particular was because accessing the PlayStation memory cards was quite slow. Whereas accessing the battery backup on the original NES cartridges was almost instantaneous. So, um, in order to avoid you having to wait around to read and write to memory cards, the option was there to do a memo save, which would just save it in the console's memory temporarily, 
It's like if you wanted to save before going into a dungeon, for example, you could do, and you didn't have to sit around waiting. But the downside to that was if you didn't make a full-on memory card save before you turned your console off, you would lose everything. The memo save was just temporary. But it is quite convenient. I believe it's still subject to the rules of saving though, in that you can't save anywhere, you can just save out the world map, so you can't use it for like save scumming your way past a particularly difficult challenge or anything like that. Um, it's just a slight time saver for those who care about such things. Right, you'll see our characters are already starting to more than one hit with their attacks. And this is something that kind of fell out of favour with from about Final Fantasy IV onwards, I think. Um, or at least it stopped being quite so explicit about it. So in these early ones, as you leveled up, your characters would begin doing more hits with their weapon, which would basically multiply the amount of damage they were doing. Um, and so that was one way that the characters would be distinct from one another. So characters like the fighter and the monk would get extra hits on their weapons much more quickly than, say, the wizards would. And once you get the monk to a point where his fists are better than a weapon he's got equipped, um, again, he does a lot more attacks with his fists because he's got two of them. Right, Chaos Shrine. Go, go, go. Here is Garland. And a bunch of bats. The king will have no choice but to exchange the kingdom for his daughter's life. Cornelia will be mine. Who's that? Hm. The king's lapdogs. Do you have any idea who you're messing with? You really think you have what it takes to cross swords with me? Very well. I, Garland, will knock you all down. I'm so glad they kept that line in this new translation because I, Garland, will knock you all down is one of the most iconic lines in the whole of the original Final Fantasy 1 script. Alright, let's get some protecting going on. Let's project Tim. And Tim can cast Thunder. Forty-two damage, pretty nice. All right, you guys keep attacking. You can protect yourself as well. Tim can do thunder again. Okay, those protect shields soak it up a nice bit of damage, and. Probably a good idea uh, to protect Sam as well. I will probably be fine. Oh no, we're done. Bosses in this are quite easy. It has to be said. Princess Sarah! Exclamation mark! You? You've come to rescue me? I don't know how I can ever thank you. I am Sarah, Princess of Cornelia. It's the first time anyone's ever defeated Garland. You must allow me to show my gratitude. Please accompany me to Castle Cornelia. Thank you for returning my daughter to my side. There can be no doubt that you are the warriors of light from Lucan's prophecy. You should hear the prophecy in its entirety. <coughs> if I may. When darkness veils the world, four warriors of light shall come. If they cannot gather the shards of light, the darkness will consume all. The four crystals will never shine again. Now, 
I hear that a crystal can be found on the continent to our north. Restoring light to the crystals is our only hope of ridding the world of the monsters which plague it. I will have the bridge to the north rebuilt, as I promised. I pray that you succeed in restoring light to the four crystals and to the world. Nice. Wait just a moment. This loot has been entrusted to the princesses of Cornelia for many generations. When he abducted me, Garland took this loot as well. I want you to have it. It may aid you in your journey. Thanks, princess. You obtain the loot. Dancing girl in town. Yes, 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 we know. Shut up. If you wanted, you could... I mean, here in Cornelia. No, it's nothing. You should make preparations for your journey. Restore light to the crystals. She wants me, I tell you. She wants a bit of the fighter... sword. Sarah's thoughts are always with you. It's not all. But anyway... The Warriors of Light! I can't thank you enough for saving Lady Sarah. So, there we are. That is the beginning of Final Fantasy 1 for PSP. We're going to get a little cutscene now, and then that will wrap up our first episode. They are rebuilding our bridge to the northern continent. Orders from His Majesty! We're to do our part to fulfill Lucan's prophecy. If it was this easy, you'd think they'd have done it sooner. But apparently, no. No, 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 no. What does this bridge have to do with the prophecy? The four warriors of light are here. They're here in Cornelia. Right, there we go. So, Final Fantasy 1, we are underway. The Final Fantasy Marathon has begun. So, we'll pick up from here next time. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. Be sure to check out moegamer.net for new articles on Japanese and Japanese-inspired video games, new and old, every weekday. Every month, Moegamer features an in-depth exploration of an individual game or series as its cover game, so be sure to check the archives to see if your favourite has had a deep dive yet. If you'd like to support the site directly, please consider becoming a patron or buying me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.